Hey everyone, it's Nikki Case here. So as part of my new month resolution, I'm going to try to get these developer vlogs out more often uh, to describe, you know, things I'm doing with nothing to hide as well as uh, other projects, which I will get onto that. Uh, so anyway, this is the uh, most up-to-date uh, most up -to -date edition of Nothing to Hide. As you can see, I've made uh, Poppy a little bit more punkish. I don't know, I kind of like the hoodie. I kind of want to do the satire of uh, the hoodie as a national uniform, as kind of a affectionate dig at Silicon Valley. Uh, also, blinking cute little monolith eye eyes. Um, anyway, yeah, let's just keep on going and see what's new. So, yep, some uh, good old-fashioned wall propaganda again. You are the center of attention. Avoiding cameras is, is a violation of the terms and conditions and will immediately result in the termination of you and your account. Gladys voice. Uh, okay, so the um, it's a bit messy. Like you know, I didn't quite. I was in the middle of fixing up this art, but I couldn't like you know wait until the, to to show you this because this is really interesting. So now you can interact with the in-game walls, and, and I actually I also did mention this in the previous uh, nothing to shows. Um, so for here, like oh, do I want to upvote or downvote this wall propaganda? Well, I'm gonna downvote it because screw you. All right, and uh. So over here, ooh, we've got some broken glass, some shattered world over here. All of our dreams and worlds are shattered and other stuff like that. Yeah, more cool stuff. Uh, so yeah, that's the other thing that the new um, engine that I've refactored and redone like lets me put in these in this environmental art uh, in more easily. Uh, and now I'm going to walk up to this model with II, and you're going to see the new thing that, well, not, it's not new, but uh, it's something that I re-implemented in this engine, which is... Whoa, what happened here? Your mom is what happened here, you fatty. Uh, yeah, as uh, you know, that's just placeholder writing for now. Uh, I'm going to make the monoliths like all like such assholes. Like, imagine how cute and innocent the portal turrets were. And imagine all of them were complete assholes. That's, uh, that's how the monolith IIs do. Uh, so yeah, here's a... Uh, so basically it's the same intro level from before, but uh, remember how I downvoted that wall propaganda just now? Well, look at this. It took an actual picture of me when I hit that downvote. Uh, and you know, later I'll put an animation where Poppy like baps the uh, downvote button. And it notes that. It notes, God, what a spoiled brat. We made her famous and she constantly spits in our face like on her show last week when she downvoted that wall propaganda. Uh, and yes, this is a little... uh kind of in meters rests, uh, kind of hinting at uh, what Poppy did last week that has made her the villain of the wall and a sort of pseudo-villain of uh, a pseudo-enemy, public public enemy of this social media surveillance dystopia world. And of course, you can upvote and downvote this one as well. Screw you. Uh, and yes, like I just want, I'm going to refresh this page to show that uh, that last bit over there actually, ch actually like, changes depending on whether you upvote or downvote it, or if you just walk by it and they completely ignore it. So, oh yeah, the same thing, your mom's what happened here, yeah, fatty. Um, yeah, and uh, so if I go up here, yeah, sure, just walk on by. Now she doesn't express the stupid opinion, she wasn't that way on her show last week. Again, hinting at what's to come in this story. It's a very non-linear storytelling, which I'm so excited for, and also like, like having being able to interact with the in-game walls is like a really great way to kind of merge uh, gameplay and storytelling and so like the story and world like more like kind of interacts with you and like kind of you know just like the story listening to you saying like hey yeah I'm listening you exist as a player you are sort of influencing this it's gonna be a more or less linear story but hey just having that little bit of narrative juice is so cool and stuff like that Alright, anyway, now that I'm done geeking out about that, um, next is something I'm also really excited for, which is I am doing a collaboration with Viheart. Yes, that's Viheart of YouTubery and math and musician fame. Hell yeah! So, let me drink some tea first. Parable of the Polygons, a playable post. On the shape of society. Uh, okay, so first I want to say I want to kind of alleviate, uh, I guess, any uh, concerns about 
uh, you know, me doing like these several side projects. And yeah, it's a thing that I've been worried about too. But I found that um, like so all those side there are, there are a few side projects that I've worked on um, while working on nothing to hide. Nothing to hide is still is the main project, but like these side projects, like think more of them as sidekick projects. Yeah, sidekick projects. They they don't really take away from the main project, not really. And in fact, they really add a lot because like. Side projects have done like um, the public domain game jam coming out similar to 2014 and this collaboration with Vihearts. Like, I mean, yeah, they take away a little bit of time, but like, like in the end, like it, it's gonna make nothing hide much more, much stronger. It's gonna make me as an artist much uh, more well uh, well rounded and stronger and unique and art 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 art, art, art. stuff like that. Cause yeah, like doing the public domain ga game jam like really got me into. Uh, into the like the public domain uh, activism sphere like I just like just a couple months ago uh, I did the uh, I, I had an event uh, with Creative Commons and the EFF on like we, we like had an event about public domain games and I was a speaker and it was awesome and of course that really helps Nothing Hide like hell I showed off Nothing Hide at that event and Nothing Hide is a public domain game and like it part of the reason why like I, I really care about public domain activism and then coming out similar to like writing that uh, it was a very like it's just a short little experimental game that I did was that was very narrative focused uh, and that really really strengthened my story writing skills uh, which you can't tell by for that your mom is what happened here fatty kind of thing but okay like that was placeholder like like kind of like uh, the whole interactive storytelling thing and like the like figuring out new ways and like because like Interactive storytelling is like a thing that you know people aren't really figuring out how do you uh, use the facts that you can interact with it as part of something that can, can convey mood and af affect people like instead of just rather being like kind of a like, gimmick on top of it uh, and those kind of philosophies that I learned and took away from creating coming out simulator uh, I've applied to um, nothing hide as you can tell from the being able to change the story in subtle ways through the in-game wall posts, uh, and of, and also press like coming out similar for some reason, uh, even though I've only made it in two weeks, <laughs> it got far more press than Nothing to Hide, and I am far more famous for that, and which is going to really help Nothing to Hide once it's out. Uh, and this, holy crap, I'm collaborating with Vihart. Like, that's freaking cool. Like, I, I I freaking love her videos. It's amazing. Uh, anyway, uh, you've just been listening to my voice, and I haven't even like doing been doing anything on this video. It's kind of boring. Yes, this is a, this is a video. It's uh, pictures and audio. I have been neglecting the pictures. So yes, uh, so playable post. Um, actually, you know what? For uh, for reference, um, this is the is how I got into this whole like playable post thing. So basically, it's half game. Sorry, half video game, half blog post. So this is a. Uh, little interactive playable post on how I made, it's a tutorial, a game dev tutorial on how I made the lighting effect and I can hide. Uh, so at first it was like a little dot, then it was like this ray thing, then a ball of rays, and then this thing, but it looks like shit. So then I smartly only aimed the rays at the corners, and then I connect the dots again, and it looks pretty good. So I fuzz it out, and yeah, it's like, and that's how you do the lighting effect and I can hide. Apparently, uh, <laughs> I didn't expect that to get a lot of attention like it got like on the front page of Hacker News for a day like 300 upvotes it definitely saved uh, my ass on the crowdfunding campaign for nothing to hide um, and, and and it got the attention of uh, Vihart and Brett Victor and uh, Ken Perlin and like a whole bunch of other like really cool um, people who are working who are all were apparently working on this uh, new genre of like interactive non-fiction explorable explanations that we never really came up with a word for or a phrase for i think a playable post might work fine anyway okay long rants like i've been probably ranting about this a lot longer than i can hide but hey that's uh, why i'm doing these devlogs to cover all the projects i'm doing sides here and there sidekick projects anyway okay whatever so it's you drag and drop these cute little buggers around also they're all kind of Shapest bigots, every one of them, so happy. So basically, the rule of it is, uh, yeah, this is a grid-shaped neighborhood, and you can move around ones that are swaying, uh, and like they're not. So here's the thing: they are only upset if 
a third or less of their immediate neighbors, so one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, uh, yeah, eight immediate neighbors, they're only upset if less than a third of their immediate neighbors are like them. So this one has five out of six neighbors which are not like them, so only one out of six of their neighbors are like them, so that's like, what, 16%? That's less than a third. Um, so this one's unhappy, so if we move it over here, uh, only one out of two of its immediate neighbors uh, are like them, so it's happy. So these little shapes, they're not like super bigoted or anything. Uh, and in fact, yeah, they're like totally okay with by in being they're totally okay in being in uh, the minority. Uh, and as long as they're not like you know uh, less than a third. Uh, and in fact, they really they they would like a. Uh, somewhat mixed neighborhood. For example, these ones up here are bored because they have no triangle neighbors. Uh, so you would think, you know, they're just only a little bit biased. So how, how bad could that affect a shaped society? Well, well, my friend, here you move around all the uncomfortable ones. You can't move the ones that are not uncomfortable because only the uncomfortable ones want to move. So I'm not thinking about this too hard. I'm just like moving them around randomly. It's like, yeah, don't think too far ahead. Just move them around. Oh, that one got unhappy because a neighbor moved away. That one's happy. Move, move you away. Uh, again, they only are uncomfortable and want to move if less than a third of the neighbors are like them. And boom. And what have you noticed? Earlier, they were all like totally mixed together. and But now you can definitely see kind of little archipelagos of a definite... Like, you can start to see the hints of segregation here. Uh, and that's not a fluke. Like, here's a little simulation down here, and we start running it. It goes from on average, uh, on average, forty-eight percent of my neighbors like me for each of one of these. But you start moving the like the uncomfortable ones are moving randomly to random spots, and you can see over time segregation. And uh, yeah, it goes up from forty-eight percent to seventy-two percent. In fact. And that's only if less than the 33% of the neighbors are like them. Now imagine if it was like, they just don't like being in the minority at all. And they still would be like, see, totally okay. All of them would be totally okay in a 50-50 neighborhood. But with 50%, uh, I guess, bias? Lot watch it happens. It goes far past the 73% we saw earlier. Look at this. Look at this. Ah, uh, yes. 92%. Wow. So that is... A prime example of emergence behavior, something that I really care about as a game designer, uh, and like only like recently I've been like, thinking a lot about how the kind of principles of game design, emergence behavior, how the motives of the individuals can result in collective behavior that absolutely no one wants. That's like can be applied to economics, to sociology, to social psychology, anthropology. It's like. And I've been learning a lot more about Austin Humanities. I mean, I kind of had to because like, I made, I was making nothing high. And it's like, hey, Nikki, you should kind of read up Michael Foucault. He's been talking about all the things. And it's like, okay, fine, I'll read some Michael Foucault. And it's like, holy shit, this is an amazing author. So uh, yeah, read some MF. Yes, some MF. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. So this is uh, this is awesome. It's, a, it's like a mix of game theory and social psychology uh, and cute little triangles and squares and mathematics. Uh, actually, this model is called Schelling Segregation Model. It was proposed by um, famous game theorists, uh, actually Nobel Prize winning game theorist, actually you know, one of the founders of game theory, Thomas Schelling. And uh, yeah, he proposed it as um, kind of a thing to explain, not excuse, but you know, explain uh, major, major racial segregation in major cities. Um, and yeah, he found like that, you know, it, like even if everyone's just a little bit biased and they will all be okay with mixed neighborhood, this is what happens. Uh, and like Vi noticed, like this, you know, doesn't just have to literally apply to, uh, you know, just race or just, uh, physical location. Uh, please ignore the, gar the garbage truck that's kind of, uh, doing its thing in the background of this audio. Um, anyway, yeah, she noticed that, you know, it could apply to women in STEM, like she's, a uh, a female mathematician, so that <laughs> she has a lot to say about that. Uh, and you know, it could apply to you know gentrification, as many of my Silicon Valley friends have uh, pointed out to me. Uh, it could def it can definitely also apply to uh, the internet bubble, like kind of like you know uh, filter bubbles, like uh, you know you you don't like other people's opinions, so you go to some uh, you know little subreddit or sub forum where you can only listen to your own echo chamber and then that's what leads to total polarization of opinions on the internet and actually uh, pretty much any modern media because like you know you don't like fox news just like turn into 
uh, you know, some some whatever the opposite of Fox News is. Um, and that's a uh, yeah. This could like so like it's this like whole model is uh, general enough that it can apply to a lot of things, but it's specific enough that it says one thing that uh, yes, a small bit of bias can lead to massive amounts of separation. Uh, and it's a little call, I guess, a call to action for diversity in like, you know, diversity in ideas, diversity in cultures, or diversity in gender, race, or whatever social justice things you may have you, or, you know, diversity in, uh, opinion, basically. Also, I get to collaborate with Vihart. Did I mention that? It's freaking Vihart. All right, so that's all I have uh, for this uh, developer vlog. I so new month resolution. Oh yeah, because yeah. Oh yeah, did I mention I do resolutions on like a monthly basis? Because like I don't understand New Year's resolutions. Because like New Year's is like why would the fuck would you wait an entire year? Uh, it's like you know that's a long time. That's like a yeah, that's a great way to like just be a lazy asshole if you only make resolutions every year. No, no, you gotta make resolutions every month. Uh, and my November resolution is to do these developer vlogs for my projects just kind of improv them like I'm really not planning this in fact I am starting to kind of regret what I little said just now about the social justice thing because that's kind of a hot topic right now and now I regret saying that I regret saying that fuck anyway uh yeah so new month resolution for November hope to do these developer vlogs uh, about once a week ish yeah once a week sounds doable I guess I, I don't just, you know I don't need to plan to think things too far ahead in advance uh, just show off uh, progress I've made or progress I've not made. Yeah, I think it'll be fine. I'm just going to play through this again one more time. It's a little way to end out this video. What happened here? Your mom is what happened here. You fatty.